The dipole moment is a description that is used to show how the electrons are distributed or spread out in a polar covalent bond. So as a refresher, when we have a polar covalent bond, this means that electrons are being shared between two atoms, but they're not being shared equally. The dipole moment is gonna show us which of the two atoms has a stronger attraction for those electrons and how the electrons are actually balanced or distributed between the two atoms. So what I have here are the four molecules that I used in the previous video when we were calculating differences in electronegativity and classifying bonds as polar, nonpolar, or ionic. When we have a molecule that has only nonpolar bonds, like this particular molecule here with the difference of electronegativity of zero, we have no reason to describe the dipole moment of this particular molecule. There is no dipole moment. The electrons are perfectly distributed between the two atoms. There's no unequal distribution. So drawing a dipole moment is not applicable to this molecule. So we'll just write not applicable. When we have a molecule that has a polar bond, like this molecule right here, where these bonds are polar, we sometimes want to be able to show easily how the electrons are unevenly spread out between the two atoms in the polar bond. And the notation that we use for that is to show which atom has the stronger pull for the electrons. Now that's gonna come from the electronegativity values. I'm gonna erase some of them here. So for this particular molecule, the fluorine is the most electronegative of the two, which means it has a stronger pull for the electrons. And we're gonna represent that one of two ways. One way that we can represent that is by simply drawing a lowercase delta negative sign next to the atom that is the most electronegative. So this here looks kind of like an unfinished eight. This is the lowercase Greek letter delta, and the negative sign used to indicate that this is a more electronegative atom. The electrons are being distributed towards this atom, which means that there's gonna be a buildup of negative charge in this position. And then likewise, we're going to use the same type of notation on the nitrogen atom to show that that atom is got a buildup of a little bit of positive charge because its electrons are being pulled away from it. We pronounce these symbols partial negative and partial positive. This kind of implying that it's not fully ionic, so we're not writing a full positive charge or a full negative charge, but it's positive-ish because electrons are being pulled away. Now, because all of these bonds are identical, you could put negative, delta negative signs, partial negative signs on all of the fluorines. And this is one way that we can indicate the dipole moment in this molecule. Now, we have another way of indicating it as well, which I'm gonna show you with this particular molecule. Let's erase these values down here. Now, in this molecule, if you recall, this bond right here, we classified as nonpolar. So that means that this bond doesn't have a dipole moment, and we don't need to, to use any sort of notation to represent the polarity of this bond. However, the carbon-nitrogen bond does qualify as a polar bond because it has a difference in electronegativity of 0.5, with nitrogen being the most electronegative of the two. So um, the other way of representing the dipole moment is to draw an arrow that starts at the atom with the lowest electronegativity and goes towards the atom with the highest electronegativity, like this. And the way that I like to remember the direction that the arrow goes is I like to make a plus sign next to the positive-ish element and then draw the arrow towards the negative one. So when I say positive, I'm referring to this partial positive, partial negative notation. Make a plus sign on the partial positive element and then draw your arrow towards the negative. So this is the other way that we represent the dipole moment. You can use either these symbols or you can use the arrow, whichever one you would prefer. And for some molecules, it's easier to draw the arrows and other molecules, it's a little bit harder to draw the arrows. Like this molecule down here, it's kind of tricky to draw the arrow on that. 
So last but not least, we have this ionic compound that we um, had included in the last video where we were calculating changes in electronegativity. For ionic compounds, again, we do not represent the dipole moment. We only represent dipole moment in molecules that have polar covalent bonds. So if it's an ionic bond or if it's a nonpolar bond, we would never draw the dipole moment for those molecules.